What I'm trying to say, Chitral, Northwest Frontier, big hassle to get to, either by road or plane. And, uh, but the 17-year-old uh, British hippie Kipling, he's exhilarated by these mountains, this tribal territory, because he has seen with his own eyes. Mountain people are free people. Like in Nepal. They're free once they get outside of Kathmandu. Uh, because up in the mountains, an individual can dominate the society. One expert rifleman from a high superior vantage point can ambush a whole army if they have to squeeze through a narrow gorge, single file, yeah. And that's why the British imperialists, they gave up trying to subdue these free tribes up here. Um, why? Well, the British had three wars uh, in this area called the British-Afghan uh, Wars. So, 1839, 1879, and 1919, trying to take over Afghanistan, set themselves up in Kabul. Mm. Well, uh, let's consider the second Afghan-British War, 1842, um, in there, uh, there was 4,500 British and Indian mercenaries. Uh, they decided they needed to make a treaty retreat to Peshawar. They had 12,000 camp followers, wives, children, servants, Victorian furniture. Leave it, leave it in Kabul. Um, yeah, they marched out of Kabul down the Khyber Pass. Remember, this is all India. There's no Pakistan existing at this time. Yeah, down this switchback trail, huh? And uh, they were surrounded and swarmed by Afghanis. Bloodbath. Mm. There's a famous painting in the British Museum of the one English soldier that managed to get through to Peshawar. 15,999. One slumped forward in his horse. Famous painting of this guy uh, struggling into Peshawar. So... Uh, they just shot the fucker. And consequently, the British colonials, their wisest option, or only option, was to make a peace treaty with the tribes. Nonviolent peace treaty because they were afraid the Russians were going to take over. <laughs> it's called the Great Game in the 1800s between the British and the Russians trying to gobble up tribal areas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the hippie who would fly to Chitral. He doesn't know anything about this uh, history. He's too young. 17, waste time reading thick history books. He doesn't give a damn or even know about that great game. A geopolitical chess game between Imperial Russia and Great Britain during the last century. He just knows what he sees with his eyes. Mountain people, mm -hmm. free people. They want to smoke hashish? Bring out the hookahs. And they don't pay taxes to weird psychopaths and funny-looking Western suits. They carry guns wherever, whenever they like. Everybody's riding horses. There isn't one 
private car in this whole Northwest frontier. Everybody rides horses. <laughs> Great horse, horse people there, yeah. And, you know, like I said, the nation concept never caught on up here. You want to go to Jalalabad, you want to go to Kabul. Well, in theory only, it's like going from Pakistan to Afghanistan. It's just a theory that's coming, I guess, from Islamabad. There's more than 40 natural mountain passes between Chitral and Afghanistan. They're right there at the border. They're just across the border. Lots of mountains. And... Uh, no road blocks, no road checks, no passports, no sentry boxes. There's nothing there. But moke hair goats looking at you. Goo. Ebex. Snow leopard if you're lucky. Mm. Well, mm. Yeah, the Sutrales uh, cross this, these passes whenever they want to. They just walk over you know, ever since they discovered how to make a fire. They've been walking over. Let's say the Lawari Pass. 10,500 feet. <laughs> Completely blocked by, by, uh, by snow avalanche. <laughs> they just walk over like they normally do. Well... Kipling, oh, he sees that poster, Daily Frights to Chitra. And he feels, he books a seat. <laughs> he feels a goosebumpy sensation of a true awakening. My spirit will part the clouds. Yeah, single engine propeller, Foker. He takes a horse-drawn tonga carriage with those charming jangly bells on the harnesses out to the ramshackle uh, airport and uh, because the British uh, hippie is searching for his true self, search for cosmic self, rite of passage, 17 years old, family named Kipling, and he's princely. Handsome, hawk nose, sparkling green eyes, yeah, sandy hair, small precious lips, oh yeah. Suggests classical Greek features. Mm. 